Contagion is coming! Contagion! Oh my goodness. Oh man. All right. So uh, I'm back better than ever. Chris, I go, I go home group living in South Florida. And uh, I wanted to uh, have some more fun here uh, with ReVenture Consulting. Uh, they have another video out that I wanted to uh, take a second to address. And, um, and, and just, you know, full disclosure, I love their channel. I love their content. Very interesting, very entertaining. Um, and some of the things they talk about, I don't necessarily disagree with. Um, however, comma, uh, the application of some of their data to, again, what I see in the market down here in South Florida is, is incorrect. Um, so I want to address that. I'm going to start with reviewing their last video and, uh, share my thoughts. Um, now he, um, I don't even know his name, which I, I should, <clears throat> I'm just calling him Reventure Consulting. Um, but what he is uh, suggesting and sharing is his investment approach to different uh, companies that um, you know I don't necessarily disagree with. He is not a financial advisor. Um, he discloses all of that. I also am not a financial advisor. Um, I am no longer a Series 7 uh, 63 or life, health, and variable annuity uh, license holder as I used to be for 18 years. Um, but I do have some experience in that field, and I certainly have lots of experience um, being uh, involved in the equities market in, in large investment positions um, when the market uh, got dis decimated um, over the years. So, uh, and I've experienced all that from the, uh, the, the, <laughs> Jeez, so many of them going back to uh, 1998 is when I got licensed, give or take. I'd have to I'd have to look up my own records. I don't actually remember anymore. Um, and that is a function of uh, probably my CTE. But nonetheless, um, I'm going to do a screen share here. And uh, what I will provide is some other things to consider if you actually um, do believe that there are some uh, some opportunities in, or if you sense that there is weakness in sectors, I will share exactly how I made the most money for my clients over the years. And uh, he's talking about a, a put strategy, an option strategy, uh, betting against different companies, which um, is fine. Uh, most of the content on this channel has nothing to do with uh, investment. Um, you know, that's not what, you know, full disclosure that depends on who I'm speaking to. So if I was talking to a real estate investor, that conversation is very different um, than it would be to a family that's looking to buy a home because they're, um, they're looking for very different things, right? So um, that being said, I don't believe that we are, uh, at least down here in South Florida, I don't see anything that points to um, a you know fifty percent correction or contagion or any of those things, um, period. I don't one hundred percent. So and if I did, I'd be the first to tell you. I don't. I don't believe that's going to happen uh, anytime soon. I see a uh, obviously we have a very robust uh, appreciation profile over the last uh, year and a half, eighteen months, whatever it is, um, and certainly for multiple years. So we have experienced nothing but a uh, an upward market. Um, since I've been in real estate, um, but the last few years have been uh, exponential growth and appreciation due to supply and demand. So all that being said, <clears throat> um, I want to address uh, ReVenture because uh, I'm having fun with it. All right, so I'm going to go to, whoa, let's see here. Go into their video. I'm going to play it. Enjoy. And um, here we go. I'm going to bring this back a little bit. So what I'm going to do in this video, as the one who saw this Zillow crash coming before anyone else. Okay, hold on. So he saw the Zillow crash company coming before anyone else. That is not true. <laughs> that is simply not true. Um, I have said from day one and continue to say, and anybody who I know who is a top performer um, and you know, uh, very good at what they do in real estate, knows that the iBuyer model that they employed was a disaster from the start. So um, 
I don't want to uh, give away too much here, but when he says that he's the first person to know that that uh, was not going to work, um, or you know, I don't, he didn't use this terminology. I will too big to fail. Um, I can tell you, <laughs> hand to God, hand to God, whichever hand to God. That was never my. So that, as I've said in my last video, as a uh, rebuttal to his, um, that program was doomed to fail from day one. It never worked. Period. So the that you couldn't hire more algorithmic uh, professors to come in and fix their algorithm to do whatever, whatever. They overpaid for all of their homes. They executed poorly on all of their inventory. They did not have a, this, uh, the entire process from soup to nuts was a complete disaster and hemorrhaged cash from day one. So that is not a surprise to anyone who, um, who has any experience working with Zillow in uh, in the field. So with that in mind, I'll let him talk. I'm going to number one, tell you guys how I saw it coming. How did I know that Zillow was going to go crashing down? And number two, from what we learned from Zillow's crash, what can we then predict about the next crash? What's the next company that's going to go down in flames? Because let me tell you folks, there's a real estate company out there that I think is even more overvalued right now than Zillow was a couple months ago. Okay, so now again, um, from my perspective, looking at this, not from the uh, company perspective of which company is going to crash next, um, I'm looking at from looking at it from the field. And again, um, there is no iBuyer program out there that I think is a sustainable business model. Um, I think all of them are terrible. I think all of them are going to get eviscerated in the market. I think all of them are bloated uh, equities that are going to get dismantled. So I do agree with him that that if you're going after weakness in a sector, um, and in that uh, in that I buyer, um, if that's what you're looking to target, I don't disagree. So the company he's going to go on to talk about, I could you know, go after all of them. So. Um, absolutely. Short them, buy puts, you know, be aggressive. If you're an investor, an accredited investor who has the, the risk tolerance to do these things, then by all means do that. But again, I am not a uh, registered financial advisor. I am certainly uh, no longer a Series 7 stockbroker. Um, but if you believe there's weakness in anything, then all of these or sectors or companies or whatever that might be, then these are totally appropriate strategies if you want to gamble. Um, so let's continue. Maybe that would be a good one to bet against today. Without further ado, let's get into the data, folks. And by the way, I'm a huge fan of their channel. Um, you take a look at this chart. We can see Zillow stock price has gone. All right, we don't need to see that. At 60. However, if you're someone who watched this channel and watched my video, the reason that I put that I fast forward is all it does is show the stock price, um, you know, uh, a chart and how it got uh, whacked from the high to where it's at right now. Um, again, that's what happens in a in, in the stock market, right? Um, stocks go up, stocks go down, and um, and they just, they close down um, a non-functioning element of their business. And so again, sold that inventory to other investors or invest investment, um, if not, obviously not one investor, but they're offloading their inventory to investors. And the reason that those, there's an appetite for that, um, for that inventory is because those other investors do know how to execute on it. And they're getting the, they're getting their inventory at the right price, which is something that, um, that Zillow never did. They never got it right. So, um, we're comparing apples to oranges, but let's continue because there, I'm sure, I'm sure the company he's about to talk about, Next, another big time iBuyer uh, is also going to suffer a similar fate because these large iBuyer companies suck. Video six weeks ago, you might have been someone who bought put options on Zillow stock. And so if you believe that right. is coming to say, he's just talking about a September make, how much money did I make from the put options on Zillow? I'm going to show you guys a little of that and showing you how much money I made on what to say. Are you someone who enjoyed the? I, I don't think at any point he actually shows what he actually made on this. Um, Zillow tried to predict where home prices were going in the future, and he's acknowledging that they failed. Trying to predict where home prices were going in the future, and he's acknowledging. 
All right, so this is good. This is good. He's taking a quote from Rich Barton, um, again, the CEO of Zillow, who went out there and just got his ass handed to him and now has to uh, <laughs> and now has to make a statement. So let's just hear his spin on this because uh, spin is fun. Zillow tried. Zillow tried to predict where home prices were going in the future, and he's acknowledging that they failed. They failed. They mm. Mm. Mm -mm. Uh, No, uh, he is. I don't care what he's saying, but what I can tell you happened is he failed. All right, um, he failed at this iBuyer program, but that has nothing to do with predicting the the future. This is not a uh, bird in, or a, a canary in the coal mine, as uh, as he goes on to describe. In my opinion, this is uh, exiting a business that is hemorrhaging cash and always has. So, um, yeah, they're getting back to basics, which is uh, <laughs> selling realtors leads. Uh, good luck with that, because any realtor worth the salt knows how to do that um, much more effectively and much uh, <laughs> far cheaper than, um, than Zillow. But that's a different story for a different day. Don't know how to predict future home prices. Even with all doesn't know how to predict the future of home prices. Let's dig a little bit deeper there. Let's go back to Warren Buffett. Nobody knows how to predict the future of anything. And anybody who's trying to market time is going to get their ass handed to them, you know, nine times out of 10. They'll be right once, maybe. Um, but if you believe that there is a uh, economic crisis that is going to happen and you sense that there is a sector weakness that you can exploit and take advantage of, I think there are more prudent ways to diversify that risk profile rather than just buy a put or call option or whatever that might look like, an option strategy that if not executed uh, will expire worthless um, at some point um, or you know, you'll pay a hefty premium for. So let's just continue. All of the data that Zillow has, Zillow has more data on the U.S. housing market than any company in America, and it's not even... I don't necessarily agree with that, but let's continue to hear what he has to say. Close. Any home, it gets listed on the market, it gets listed on Zillow. Zillow sees what the list price is. It sees how That's because Zillow is in bed with all of the MLS. Uh, that exist out there. So it's not, <laughs> they don't have access to um, anything that I don't have access to here in, uh, in my MLS, um, but they, they have cooperation agreements with all of the MLSs that exist. And then they proceed to sell that data back to realtors who are dumb enough to pay for it because they don't know how to generate their own leads. But that's a different story for another day. How many people are looking at that home? It knows that it has an offer, if it's under contract. It knows that there's a price cut. It knows all of these things. But even knowing all of that, Zillow CEO is saying, yeah, we didn't feel comfortable that we would know where home prices are going. He didn't feel comfortable continuing to hemorrhage cash on a business that did not work. That's what happened. Now, many people across uh, the internet, the financial press here on YouTube, uh, especially some very big real estate YouTubers, seem to be claiming that this is purely a I'm offended. I was not featured in this. Uh, I'm not meet Kevin. Meet Chris. All right, let's keep going. Zillow problem. This is not a housing market problem. Some people are saying they're saying that Zillow messed up, right? That Zillow's algorithm wasn't great. They didn't hire the right people in the right markets, and that you know Zillow uh, basically swung and missed on home buying and is now exiting. And that this has nothing to do with the U.S. housing market. Many people are saying that, and I'm here to tell you guys that those people are dead wrong. Right. They're dead wrong. Is Zillow winding down their home buying division? Is Zillow winding down their business? No. Are they winding down the hemorrhaging cash section of a business that did not work? Yes. Let's continue. Laying off. 25% of their workforce and seeing a 50 laying off 25% of their workforce, but a hundred percent of the iBuyer program that never worked from the beginning. So they exited a business that did not work ever and only hemorrhage cash. Please tell me more. 50% decline in stock price in one year, 35% in five days. That is a huge, what's called canary in the coal mine 
on the U.S. housing market. <laughs> What's going on with Zillow is a massive warning sign that the U.S. housing market is unstable. Let's just think about it, folks. If Zillow's CEO, who has access to more data on the housing market than anyone else in the world, if he felt... Yeah. If he, what he had more clarity on and more clairvoyance on and more canary in the cold mine uh, reading the uh, tea leaves on is his own balance sheet. And when he looked at and saw the, uh, the shareholder uproar and all of the, when he saw the internal financials of what that hemorrhaging cash proposition looked like, they decided to cut the pinky to save the arm. And that's what happened. Confident about the future direction of the housing market and that prices were going to continue going up. Why would they do what they're doing right now? Why would they shut down their number one revenue drop? Why would they lay off? It was never their number one, never, ever, ever their number one revenue driver. It was never a profitable business, period. But nice, nice spin. 25% of their workforce, if this was just simply a bug in the model, if it was a bug in the model of Zillow's Not a bug in the model, a completely flawed business that never produced a single profit. Home buying algorithm, they could fix it. They could hire any engineer. They did fix it. They shut it down. That's how you fix it. Here, any mathematical quant they want to make it better. They could learn from the mistakes they made over the last couple months and improve it in the future. But that's not what Zillow's doing. They're not. That's exactly what they did. They did that for their business for their overall business, period. That's exactly what they did. They learned from the failure of that business and decided to go on to focus their attention and their money on what does work, which was not that. They're not trying to fix this business model. They are getting rid of this business model completely because in my opinion, they know the housing market is going into the tank and that being a home flipper when the housing market is going to the tank is not a good position to be in. What you need to expect going forward Here we go. over the next several months, over the next several Please quarters, tell is me. that more companies are going to be exposed as the U.S. housing market continues to slow and continues to enter the crash state. So let's address that head on. I do believe that we will see a slowdown in appreciation um, and I hope we do, which is healthy and a normal function of a, uh, a normal market. What we have right now is an abnormal market, uh, certainly in South Florida, in that there is not enough supply to, um, to supply the demand that's out there. So with that, you see upward uh, price pressure, and, um, and that's what we're seeing. So <laughs> supply, this is not super uh, complicated uh, economical theories here. This is basic supply and demand 101. No supply, lots of demand, prices go up, period. Now, I think at some point he talks about historical context and, and let me do that too, um, as I addressed in the last video that I did. But at the end of the day, including just look back through history, if you believe <clears throat> that the United States of America, the country itself, is not going out of business and is not going to, which there are people who think that's true, right? So if you want to, if you're terrified and think it's the end of the world, then by all means, hide under your bed and hopefully you own the house that you're in, because if you're in a rental, then you're at some point going to be uh, thrown out, right? So just hide under your bed, hide all your money and, you know, <laughs> suck your thumb. Um, that would be one thing to do, but let's continue. No, actually, let's not. Let's look at a historical perspective. So if the market corrects, which every market at some point will correct, what then happens? Well, the values go down. Okay, cool. Again, I'm not talking to investors right now because investors have a different risk profile. They have different timelines, all kinds of different things that, that play into their uh, investment analysis as to why they would be in or not into a, uh, a market at any given point, right? And all of those variables are, uh, you know, based on the uh, the investor or investors, right? Um, a home buyer who buys a house and locks in an interest rate right now um, is exactly that. They are living in the house and they are locked into an interest rate. So again, same thing I said in the last video, 
the you buy a house for 700,000, the house, you, you buy it today, tomorrow the market goes to zero, which will never happen, but okay, gets cut in half. It's the 50% contagion. What happens? Your 750 home is now worth 350. Fine. What happened to your interest rate? Nothing. You live in the house anyway. You're locked into the same interest rate. And over the course of the next 10 years, what will happen to inflation? Well, it's going to go up. What's going to happen to interest rates? It's going to go up. What's going to happen to um, the market over time? Well, it gets whacked. At some point, cash seeks its highest value and these other investors or foreign money or whatever that looks like comes back into the market because that's what happens. Where are you going to put your money? Cash seeks its highest value and good luck in the stock market. It's coming into real estate, right? So people there and why? Well, we are we don't have enough homes for all the people that want to buy them. We are in a national housing shortage period. That's the truth. So, okay, market gets whacked in half. Fine. Your 750 is worth 350. And as things normalize and as things, um, as the market corrects itself, the other buyers will come into the market because that's what happens, period. And what does that look like over time? Well, it looks like appreciation. So let's continue. And the company that I think is more exposed than anyone else right now. Ah, so now he's talking about the other company. I got off on a uh, beaten path, but uh, humor me here because this is fun. Um, I don't disagree with them. Open Door, which uh, he's about to talk about now, uh, another iBuyer company. Are they going to get whacked? Yes, probably. I mean, I'm not on the. I'm, I'm not. A, I'm not an insider. I don't have insider information, but I absolutely can tell you that these iBuyer programs suck. Um, they are not sustainable models and Zillow just proved that. So if Zillow got it wrong, what are the odds that open door did probably somewhere near a hundred percent. So is that likely to get whacked on missed earnings or whatever that is? Yeah. So if you want to be uh, a gambler and, 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 you know, make a, uh, you know, put some, put some money on red, then go for it. All right, open door. We know it's going to get whacked. I don't disagree. The problem is they most definitely will. And what has me really concerned about open door is the fact you see that on this graph where we're looking at their last four years, uh, they're basically net loss. Net loss, net loss, net loss, net loss, net loss, net loss. Same as Zillow. So you got a bunch of investor money. You got a but you you created a company based on a doomed business model that never worked, and you hemorrhaged cash. Well, congratulations, um, your business is going to get whacked. Um, <laughs> no shit, Sherlock. All right, let's continue. Uh, what's going on with Open Door? Potentially, you might want to buy put options. Uh, many of you also. What happened? We got an ad running here. Come on, don't start that nonsense. Uh, yeah. How do I skip this ad? Come on now. Skip ad. There we go. Years ago on November 4th for $9,000. So I made a net profit of 6200 and I more than tripled my money plus 200% on this trade. My one regret is that I did. You made 10 grand? That's your big bet. I'm not knocking that, but you know. <laughs> Whoop de freaking do. We're talking about <laughs> when we're talking about institutional money, we're talking about billions, <laughs> we're talking about trillions. You made 10 grand because you timed the market and you made the right call. Congratulations. Um, I'm not impressed. Uh, but that being said, when I was a stockbroker, and I'll move this over here. Mm -mm -mm. Let's see. I want to stop the screen share. I heard enough from him. Um, okay, so let's say you are out there and you do think that there is going to be a sector weakness, right? Um, you think that the real estate market's gonna crash. Well, then what I would do if I was in your shoes is I would start to find uh, ETFs 
uh, exchange traded funds that um, go inverse to the market. So a bear ETF on whatever sector it is that you think is going to get whacked. Um, what we were able to do uh, over over the years, and again, I talked about this in a post and, a, and as well as a, a YouTube uh, video, I think, um, it was so easy for me to make money for myself and clients when the, uh, the some of the triple levered ETFs that exist out there, which again, are not, these are not things that you hold on to for long periods of time. They are basically day trades. They didn't trade that way um, when they first came on the market. This was before um, the institutional money really got after them and, and made it to, to not being really investor friendly. Um, it became not suitable for a lot of people, but I was able to go out there when I thought the uh, banking sector was going to get whacked. I would go out there and I would buy the triple lever ETFs um, uh, on the Direction Bear bank stocks. Um, and I think that was FAZ. Um, when we thought that there was going to be an upside to the banking sector, like when uh, Bank of America and Citibank were at a buck or two bucks or whatever it was, which I also bought at those prices. Um, and built positions in and made my clients a fortune, we would go out there and we would buy the uh, the FAS, and which was the, the bullish triple levered ETF. So if you think that there's going to be a binary event that you can trade around because you expect that there's going to be weakness in the sector or whatever it is, then go out there and find the real estate ETF that is going against um, the real estate sector. Go out there and obviously, depends on your suitability and lots of different uh, different things. So none of this is investment advice and none of this is a recommendation. Again, I am uh, not a registered financial advisor nor a stockbroker anymore, but I do have common sense. If you see a binary date that you can trade around based on weakness that you anticipate, then you can prop yourself in whichever direction you want to by buying an ETF that that corresponds with which way you think the market or sector is going to go, right? And you will inevitably do much better than if you buy a, uh, a put or a call or an option that will expire, most likely worthless. Um, so, so that would be um, that would be my uh, that would be my suggestion. Again, not advice. <clears throat> um, all that being said. I like the channel. I like the content. Uh, Reventure is out there doing their thing and, and that's great. And congratulations, you made nine grand. Um, but at the end of the day, what do I see for the real estate market in, in South Florida, at, you know, boots on the ground? I don't really see anything changing. I don't really see, at least no time soon. I believe and know that right now we are continuing to service and support uh, buyers and sellers at the highest level and uh, getting them exactly what they want in a dream home or lifestyle or uh, the ability to sell their house and go on to uh, their next phase of life, whatever that might be, with the most money possible. So that is, uh, that is where we are at here. And um, whoa. And this thing completely lost focus. Oh, there we go. Here I am. Um, so that being said, um, I hope you enjoyed this video. I don't know if I'll keep this up because um, this is really just more for me entertaining myself <laughs> than anything else. I don't know if anybody will watch it or not, but that's it. So um, go out there. If there's anything we can do to help serve or support you in any way, feel free to reach out. And, uh, and we've always got your back when it comes to moving to or living in South Florida, but um, don't get caught in the hype of contagion fear when the only thing there is to fear is fear itself. So that's it. Have a great day. Get some.